Hey, what's going on everybody? I've got a quick but powerful video for you today. I'm going to show you how you can take fully installed operating systems, in this case Windows operating systems, Windows 7, 8, 10, 11, whatever it is, Tiny 11 is what I'm going to use in my demo, which is essentially a version of Windows 11, and I'm going to show you how you can take those and put them on a flash drive. And I'm not talking about a live ISO version, I am talking about a fully installed operating system, or multiple operating systems if you will, and put those on a flash drive and carry them around wherever you go. All right. So what I have on the left is Ventoy and what I have on the right is VirtualBox, the hypervisor of the day because natively it uses VHD files and VHD files are what we can boot using Ventoy. So I have a Tiny11 virtual machine here that I've got a 20 gigabyte VHD file on. Let's just fire it up so we can do some validation, make sure um, everything is functioning and then we can validate that that same VHD is loading on the stick when we're done here. So we'll let this boot up. All right, let's go ahead and log in. Uh, this is included in the Ultimate USB version 2, this fully installed instance of Tiny11. I put a little thank you note here, and I've added a nice little sentence here just to validate that uh, this is Easter today when I'm making this video. So this is from the VHD file, Happy Easter 2024. So I'm going to save that. This is just kind of a validation that the same exact you know instance is on our stick and I'm not pulling any tricks here. All right, so that's on the desktop. Again, this is a fully installed version of Tiny11. Let's go ahead and shut this guy down. Okay, so now we need to know where our VHD file is. If you don't know where it's at, you can just look at your virtual machine, go to settings, and then go to storage and look for the VHD file. VHD files right here and this is the path to it. So mine is on my D drive in a folder called Tiny11 20 gig VHD. So next thing we need to do is locate that. Uh, where are you at? Okay, alphabetical. There we go. <laughs> Here's our VHD file. All right, so we need to get Ventoy on this stick. Believe it's already on there, but for good in for good measure, let's go ahead and put it on there again, just to make sure we're working with a fresh install of Ventoy here. If you already have Ventoy installed, uh, you can obviously use the same stick, no problem. All right, now we have Ventoy installed on our F drive flash drive. This is a, one thing to know guys, this is a very high performance flash drive. This is a USB 3.2 generation two. It has both USB A and C. I'm using the C interface today. This thing is capable of nearly gig speeds for read and write. When you're dealing with booting from VHD fully installed operating systems, you're going to want a very high performance drive for the best experience. I've done this with 3.0 drives. It works, but it's not a great experience. I mean, you can do it, but using a very high performance flash drive is the way to go. And that's why I personally use these for the Ultimate USB version 2. If you haven't seen that, check it out, bootableusbs.com. Pick up a copy today. I'll ship it out to you tomorrow. It's the greatest USB on the planet. All right, guys, next thing we need to do is head over to the Ventoy VHD plugin page. And this is going to show us where to get that VHD boot image, which is a requirement. So it's a GitHub page. I've already downloaded it, but I'll just do it again to show you. Get the zip file here. And then you just need to extract that. Let me drag this over. So go ahead and extract that. And then there's two files in here. We're obviously on Windows 11, so we're going to use the Windows 10 based. And you just need to grab that image file, copy that, head back to your flash drive. Thought I had it open, but no. Okay, so F drive in my case. And you need to create a folder called Ventoy. This is like the configuration folder. This is obviously a, a blank copy of Ventoy or a fresh installation. If you guys get one of mine, I'm going to have all kinds of customization in there. So in this Ventoy folder, you're going to have a ton of stuff. But this is just a demonstration, so I'm keeping it super vanilla. So we did have to create a Ventoy folder again and put that VHD boot image in there. All right, so now the only other thing we need to do is copy over our VHD file. 
So we need to go back to the D and the folder where the VHD lives, and then we'll paste this guy onto the stick, and we should be ready to rock and roll. All right, that completed, so let's go ahead and test out our USB. I'm gonna do that by booting into a test VM where I boot my USBs from. We'll attach the USB drive, in my case the Transcend ESD310. And then we'll go ahead and get into the boot menu. And we'll pick the USB drive and we see right here we have the VHD file for Tiny11. So I'll go ahead and boot that. And there it is guys, just like that you have a fully installed version of Tiny11 or Windows 11 right in your pocket on a flash drive. Let's log in, make sure this thing works. And it's fast too. This is like having a PC with a SSD on it to be honest it's very fast everything's super responsive again if you do this on a, a slower flash drive like a 2.0 or even a 3.0 sometimes you're not going to have as great of an experience but you could still pull it off so there's the file that we created added a line there just to show you know sanity check validation so you're now running this from a USB drive and you could put as many of these on here as you want. Windows 7, Windows 8, 8, 1, 10, 11, whatever. You can add as many as you want to that Ventoy USB. The VHD files, that is, and you can boot any of them that you need to. Carry it around your pocket, have them, save your work, install new apps, blah, blah, blah. You name it, right? You have a full version of Windows on a stick wherever you go. And you can combine that with other things on your Ventoy USB. So if you buy one of my USBs, specifically the Ultimate USB version 2, uh, which is the greatest USB on the planet, if you guys haven't seen it, you need to get over to bootableusb.com today and check it out. Bootableusbs.com. I'll have a link in the description for you. Um, you'll see on that stick, I have multiple categories. Uh, I have ISOs, images, VHDs, all kinds of stuff on there. So it's not just Windows. I've got Linux. I've got all kinds of stuff on there. Uh, I'm just telling you this as an example of how you can combine the power of the VHD plugin boot with all kinds of other capabilities of Ventoy. All right, guys. So this was a demonstration of the VHD boot plugin for Ventoy. I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you guys leverage it. If you do, please let me know what you're using it for. Oh, by the way, guys, let me know how this looks. Um, <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but I've been making videos on a 1080p monitor and then publishing them as 4K, so they look kind of crappy, and it was finally brought to my attention. So this should look better. This is only 1080p, and this will only go up as 1080p. I'm not going to publish it as 4K for obvious reasons. Uh, I did some work, some testing with DSR and NVIDIA, which is the dynamic super resolution where you can you can get quote unquote 4K on a 1080p monitor. Uh, I'm not a fan. It didn't really work out for me. It was just kind of a hassle to try to work with that. So long story short, my wife kind of talked me into getting two brand new 32 inch 4K monitors and those will be coming later today, so pretty soon I should be able to make some 4K content, test that out. Uh, she's a photographer. She does a lot of picture editing and Photoshop and Lightroom, so I think she'll benefit from it a lot too. But one of the reasons that really set me over the edge on getting it, well, a couple of reasons. I got a really good deal on them, um, and I'll do probably do a whole review on those once they come in. You guys will have more information on them. But the second thing is the geek in me was happy to know that I can take these two 27-inch Dells that I have, and I'm going to wall mount these in my garage and then I'm going to run a Raspberry Pi 4 as a small little office or lab out there. So I think that'll be a really cool project too. Uh, another side note, I got RDP wrapper working. So I'm going to be able to leverage this beast of a rig that I built here. Um, I've got 64 gigs of RAM. I've got the Ryzen 7. My wife isn't using all that when she's using the PC, right? Uh, she, she uses a lot of RAM though in Photoshop. She does some crazy stuff. But anyways, I can RDP into the um, 
AMD PC that I've built that has a ton of resources from the Raspberry Pi. While she's using a local instance here, I can use an RDP session out there. So a lot of cool stuff coming, guys. If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Like I've said in my previous videos, 10,000 by the end of the year is really my goal. Um, hopefully we can get there. I know if I get your guys' support, obviously that's what's going to get us there. So I appreciate you guys sticking around. Hopefully you'll subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment. I love to interact with the community. And also share this with your friends, guys. Maybe they'll find value in it, and uh, maybe they'll subscribe too. So, hey, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think about this. I think booting to VHDs in Ventoy is one of the best things that they have going for them and one of the coolest add-ons that they have for Ventoy. What do you guys think? All right, everyone. Happy Easter. Have a great day. Until the next one, take care.